This is Sports Talk with Player Agent 3. Got a special guest today. This guy's an ACC legend, University of Virginia to be exact. If, if you're an ACC basketball fan and you don't know this name, class is in session. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I give you Richard Morgan. How you doing, coach? Hello, hello. How's everything? Everything is good, man. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on on the show, man. Despite the technical difficulties, I'm sorry about that. I'm not great at the Zoom stuff, but I I did my best. <laughs> it's, it's it's cool, man. But I, but first off, I want to say, you know, UVA University of Virginia keeps blessing me, man. And I want to send a quick shout out to uh, Harold Dean, Jamal Robinson, Curtis Staples, and Junior Burrows, who who've all been on the show, man, and. and you know, they, they brought the smoke talking about the University of Virginia basketball. So I appreciate those guys for Good. You know, definitely coming on the show. All, all us light-skinned brothers, we still, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we still in there, our light-skinned brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so, Coach, talk, talk about, I mean, talk about uh, you know, where you're from, man, and, 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 you know, where did, you know, when did you pick up a basketball? Uh, I started young, uh, picking it up about fifth grade, I guess. Uh, up until that point, I played baseball because... My dad knew a lot about baseball, so he just had me out there doing that. Uh-huh. And then my brother went there. Um, you know, my brother started telling me to, you know, do little things. My dad put a goal up outside. And then, you know, they was telling me, hey, go over to the, well, at that time it was the junior high, but, you know, now it's the middle school. So they told me go over there and practice with them. And I was like in fifth grade, sixth grade, and I was practicing with them. And, you know, Duncan and they was like, this is, you know, this is crazy. This, who is this guy? So I was, I was not really from the area of where everybody lived. I lived out a little bit away from the school. So I had to go downtown to play like outside you know, on the blacktop. And uh, just, you know, from there, I just, I took it from, you know, there to, you know, my brother would come home and show me different stuff to do and tell me, try this or, you know, whatever. And, you know, keep your elbow in and all that type of stuff. And I just start listening to him. And next thing I know, man, I was just, you know, I was going to camp. Um, and <laughs> I went to camp, believe it or not, I went to camp at uh, UNC Tar Heels. <laughs> Big Tar Heel fan back then, because, you know, back then that's what was on TV. And, you know, of course, we're out, you know, all the, all the older guys from Virginia was on there and stuff. But yeah, uh, when I was young, I just watched, uh, you know, uh, Tario basketball a lot, went to their camps all the time. And then everybody just knew I was going to go there. And then uh, I was with a guy named Kevin Madden and we were supposed to go there together with Jeff Lebo. Well, the, the, you know, the recruiting kind of turned and they went with Jeff Lebo and Kevin and kind of, I was the odd man out. So when that happened, Virginia had been with me for the whole time through all that. And everybody kept telling them, you got no shot. You know he's going to, he's going to to the Tar Heels and then when it didn't happen I still had Virginia Tech they were big but at that time they were in the Metro so mm-hmm. it wasn't even really a you know fair fair match but I still kept them in there because I was only like 30 30 35 minutes away from them so it was probably you know I, I said you know I liked them and at that time they had Dale Curry so I loved him too so mm-hmm. He used to come hang out with me and stuff like that. So that, you know, he kind of, that all that kind of just evolved. And then uh, Coach Odom, uh, who later on went on to be the great Wake Forest coach, was there with me my, you know, my, I guess, two or three years with me before he left and went to uh, Wake Forest. And, um, you know, we had, uh, <laughs> that, that staff was unbelievable. We had uh, Jeff Jones. We had uh, Jim Laranega. Uh Dave Odom, and we had a guy by the name of uh, Tom Perrin, who was a behind the scenes guy. Nobody knew about him, but he was great. He was a psychologist, and we didn't even know it in the making at that time. So we had all that kind of stuff going on. So once I made my decision, my dad said, look, we're going to just stay in the state. So you're going to have to either pick Virginia or Virginia Tech. And like I said, with Virginia being in the ACC, it was an easy choice. Uh, it was a tough choice because I, I knew a lot of people at Tech. But it was a it was a it was an easy choice as far as leagues and you know the metro wasn't what ACC was and I wanted to play on the highest level, so that's right. kind of how I ended up there. And then when I went up for my visit, Ralph Sampson told me you're coming here, and I said okay. He's seven four. I probably can't <laughs> beat him, so 
Uh, so, I, I I went I went with the big fella. <laughs> all right. So so listen listen to these to these numbers. Uh, six all time in scoring. I, I don't know if it, if if it still stands, but uh, third in steals, all ACC, Elite Eight, 1989. Take me back to those um, ACC days. You know, playing for um, playing for uh, Coach Terry Terry Holland, and you actually got to the ACC. Um, what post Michael Jordan and Lynn Bias? Yeah, I was. I when I came in, they were they were leaving. I right. mean, everybody didn't know he was going to leave, mm -hmm. you know, because they thought he'd stay around another year. Michael, I'm speaking of, and and uh, when he didn't, and then of course Lenny went uh, and got picked and all that stuff, and we know the tragedy there. But um, you know, and I always told people, I'm not sure it would have been a Michael if Lenny would have would have lived through everything. Because I tell you, man, that dude was special, man. He was the same as Mike, but he just was. It's hard to explain, man. He was just different. I mean, he was different. Mike flew around. He did too, but he was just so, he was just so tough, man, and so nasty. You know, he was just a great player, man. And he, he really played hard every night. Not that Mike didn't. I'm just saying, at that time, he wasn't Michael Jordan. He was just, you know, he was just the guy on the, on the Tar Heels team. But Mike, Mike, you know, obviously took off from there when he hit that jumper against Georgetown. That kind of catapulted his career into what it is now, I think. Mm -hmm. And then he went to the NBA and, you know, he just got better and better. And uh, Lenny didn't have that that chance. But Lenny was a special player and it was great to watch him his senior year uh, play and all that stuff against him. He, he was he was a phenomenal player, man. But, you know, it was, it was a good time. Basketball was different back then, obviously. Uh, you know, it was just... It was just grind. It was a whole grind. Every game was a grind. And every game was tough. I remember playing against Wake Forest and all those guys, and people were like Wake Forest, but they didn't realize they had some. They had some tough players too. Yeah. You know, they had Delaney Rudd and they had Mark Klein shooting it and uh, Anthony Tichy. You know, so they had a lot of good guys that people just don't realize. But the ACC was loaded then. Uh, it had every everything you wanted was in that ACC. And at that time, when I went in, it was um, it was Tommy Amaker and uh, Johnny Dawkins at Duke, and I mean, <laughs> it ain't getting any better than that. <laughs> um, so you know, I, I I just I knew I made the right decision, but then you know, now's the hard part. I got to get on that floor some kind of way, mm -hmm. and I'm just a little little old country boy from uh, Salem, Virginia, um, you know, right by Roanoke. So I said, well, you know, I'm gonna have to get in, you know, get in here and get get in where I fit in, and and, you know, I tried to make the best of it. And, you know, I said, well, you know, one thing I can do if I can just, you know, be athletic and, you know, um, then the three point line came in after I got there. The first year I was there, they didn't have one, but then they put it inside the, <laughs> inside the top of the key. So, you know, you had Big Dave Popson and all kind of uh, Tar Heel guys shooting threes seven footers and stuff and it was crazy so then they finally moved it back uh to you know to where it was and then uh obviously now they got it where it is now but yeah. you know that, that you know i just had to figure out where i could get in and you know all i knew is i wanted to get on that court and my first year they made me six man somebody got hurt and then i started uh my second year and i started all the way through after that but um i was six man up until that point um, you know, because I was a freshman and they all, we had a bunch of older guys there. Uh, we had Mel Kennedy and uh, Andrew Kennedy who were great players. And, you know, we had Tom Sheehy, uh, Olden Polynese. So we had some, we had, we had some good pieces. Uh, we had John Johnson too, was a point guard from Brooklyn. And, um, uh, you know, so we, we had the pieces that we needed. And what we did after that was we just kind of, stayed together, stayed the course and, you know, played all the way through. And then, you know, later on, those guys would leave and then I would get Brian Stiff as a freshman and I'd get John Crotty, um, who went on to play for the Miami Heat. And he's still the commentator for them now. And then Brian Stiff now is, um, uh, you know, he's all time everything at Virginia. So he, um, <laughs> he was a special player when he came in as a freshman because, you know, our whole thing was just to see the first possession always was to see who was going to guard him because that was the mismatch. And then, you know, John Crotty and I would just say, okay, we'll feed off of him after we figure out who's going to guard him. And, you know, we went pretty far that year. 
uh, to the Elite Eight. We should have, we should have probably gone to the Final Four, but we didn't. We didn't handle the game against uh, Mi- Michigan very well. Michigan, <laughs> they had Glenn Rice and uh, Mar- Ramil Robinson and all them, uh, and they were just too much for us. So, um, you know, I, I, I look back on it and I'm really, I'm really excited about the the outcome of everything and how it went down the stretch. Because uh, people don't know, but we lost Coach Holland for a stretch in there uh, due to health, and um, you know that 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 really hurt us a little about while. But actually, we had it didn't hurt us because we had something to play for, and we played for him. And you know, we beat Carolina at our place, and then we uh, lost to Duke by like two or something like that, the buzzer or something like that, mm-hmm. crazy. And we just had like a little great little stretch where we kind of got confidence. We got the young guys to buy in and it was over after that. Like I said, you know, just, and then Brian would just take it from there and just roll, you know, and he, and I told him, you know, he played with John Crotty and John Crotty's left-handed and they put Brian on the left side. I was on the right side. <laughs> so I told him, I said, you, you, you owe me some of those points, man. So <laughs> we always laugh about that stuff, but yeah, man, great time up there. Um, you know, all, all I appreciate everything they did for us up there and, you know, you go up there now. I just went up uh, Monday and watched practice. And, you know, to go into that arena, man, it's just, you know, you know you had a part in that. <laughs> you know you had something to do with it. So uh, to go in there and see that, I said, man, what what could we have done? I was up there with another teammate. And I said, what could we have done in a building like this um, back in the day? You know, because we played in U-Haul, which is now torn down. And... Um, you know, it's just it's just amazing how nice that building is and, you know, how they pack it in there and those fans come to watch everything. So uh, very good times up there and, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for anything. What um, now my I don't want to, you know, I guess I'm telling my age, but um, my memory of you is uh, I mean, you you would get hot, man, and you 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 would score in bunches. <laughs> um, what, did you have a welcome to the ACC moment where you were like, okay, I'm here? Yeah, I, I think it was like early in my like freshman year, I, I got a tip dunk against Carolina and Brad Doherty was under there and a couple of them big boys was under there and I got a tip dunk and I kind of, I think from there, that's what helped me go, okay, they, they just regular guys. I mean, you know, at, at first you're in awe of them and they're so big, man. And, yeah. you know, and then once I did that, I was like, okay, well, little country boy just dunked on you. So let's go. <laughs> now you just a regular dude. So yeah. from I think from that moment, that's when I decided, okay, I can do this, you know. So I just really worked my butt off my the next two years. Um, and then my senior year, the, well, the summer going in my senior year, it was just, I was just all out. <laughs> I did everything I could. I came in well under what they wanted me to come in at. Um, you know, I always could run long distance and we did like four to six weeks of three miles every morning, no matter what the temperature was, no matter what it was doing out there. We ran every day and I just really took that to a whole nother level. And all that summer, all I did was work, work, work and mm-hmm. put your head down. And, you know, that's back when guys really wasn't staying at the school. They were going home. I would stay there and just work, man, and just you know, be a, get in aerobic class or some type of stretching class or be in the weight room or whatever. And it just, it just kind of started from that moment. And I said, man, this would, this would be great if I could, you know, put this senior year into something special. And, you know, but I think it started with me and that's the mentality I had that it started with me. If I'm ready, then they'll all be ready. And that's exactly how we did it, man. And we just, like I said, Adam Bryant was great. Uh, John was just coming into his second or third year, I think it was. And, you know, we had gone through some adversity and it made us stronger and made us tougher. And I think, um, you know, just through all that, we we kind of persevered through all of it. And it was just fitting that the year before that, we lost to Oklahoma. By, I mean, they crushed us. And then uh, it was in Hawaii. So then we had another chance at them. And we said, man, what what a fitting way to go into a game knowing that, you know, they crushed you. So if, if, if you let down at all, you're going to get crushed again. So we went into that game with the mentality that they're not going to play like that again. And, 
you know, and that we're gonna we're gonna do what we are capable of doing. And mm -hmm. you know, we won that game, and that put us in the finals with um, Michigan. So once we did that, it was just great feeling and, and a great time to be, uh, you know, in, in in that situation and and you know all the all the things that went with it uh, throughout that whole season. Now, now you you played in the ACC for for four years, um, and in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people's opinion, the ACC is one of the, the greatest basketball conferences um, in the history of of, of college basketball. Um, you know, you know the the competitive the competitiveness and in, in the players that the ACC has produced. Um, you know, you you had a short um, prof professional basketball stint. Were you surprised that you didn't get a lot of um, NBA fanfare? Yeah, you know, I, I you know, I, I went back and forth, back and forth of how, how everything. It, it, they just weren't into shooters then. They weren't into you know, guys like myself then. It was still, they weren't ready for that type of stuff. Uh, if I'd have came a little later, then maybe it would have been okay. But just during that time, they just were still caught up on you know other things. And I just, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how you couldn't get at least drafted after mm -hmm. leading the ACC in 20 points a game uh, in a tough conference like that every night. Uh, how you can't get drafted, but it happened. Um, you know, I took that and, like you said, I just went overseas. I, I played in the CBA, then I went overseas and played, and then I just, you know, I came home waiting to go back overseas. And that's when my brother tricked me into <laughs> going down to the middle school and being a coach. And from there, here I am. So <laughs> that's kind of how that whole thing went. I just didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I, just, I just think it just kind of, you know, wasn't, um, the fire wasn't there anymore as far as, you know, just all the things I had to do to get to a, a country to play or, you know, whatever, whatever, when I thought I should have, I should have made it, you know. Um, yeah. You know, I could have been on somebody's roster. I'm not saying start or anything, but I should have been on somebody's roster just based on the hard work of of that of that whole four years at Virginia and how I climbed our way up from the bottom to the top. And um, but hey, that's the way it goes. And I would maybe things would have turned out differently, and I wouldn't be the person I am today. So I, you know, I always tell people it, it ain't it ain't always the way it. Uh, it doesn't always work out the way you, you, you got to make it work, you know, and that's what I try to make sure, I, you know, every day I try to get up and I chase my passion of this coaching and, you know, just try to make, make, make something out of this. Mm -hmm. Now you're currently the, uh, the head men's basketball coach at Bluefield College, but you, you had uh, stops at App State, Appalachian State, shout out to my guy, Darrell Robinson. Yeah, um, great. He, guy. He's in the Hall of Fame at yeah. App State. Um, East Carolina, Hampton. Um, wh which of those uh, situations have, have been your greatest challenge? Um, you know, Hampton was great. I went there three times. Because um, um, when I w first went there, I was just a third, you know, third assistant. And back then it was just a, like a, basically like a basketball operations type guy. Um, you didn't get a whole lot of love and, you know, you was behind, definitely behind the scenes. And then I went up to JMU and then I came back to Hampton. Once somebody else took over, they wanted to get me on the road. So they brought me down there. Then I stayed there for a while, then left and went to East Carolina. <laughs> stayed there for a while, went back to Hampton when the, when another guy, actually Shaw's coach, Bobby Collins got the job. I went back with him to be his associate head coach. And um, we went to the dance and that was, man, that was fantastic. Um, to, to do that. Then they got rid of us, um, claiming they wanted to go in another direction. <laughs> oh. But we was already on top, so I don't know what that meant. But anyway, that's that's what their, that was their story and they stuck to it. But then we left there and went to uh, App State. Uh, went down there, didn't really know a lot of those guys at App State. Just had heard of them or seen them on the road or whatever. And uh, he needed a guy to come in. Um, and recruit a little bit and you know try to develop the, the the guys and you know help him everyday stuff and that was houston pancher who's now at the nc state with the girls and i uh, went down there with him was there for about three years and then they let us go and then i came here 14 years ago and i always promised myself i'd try to 
go there and do a good enough job that they won't let me go. <laughs> mm. And, you know, I, I've been here 14 years now, so <laughs> I think I accomplished my goal. So um, we're waiting to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> now, now, staying with this, uh, this, this Hampton University thing, there's a big focus right now on HBCUs with, uh, you know, with Deion Sanders. Um, you got Deion Sanders at Jackson State, um, Chucky Brown at um, St. Saint Augustine University, Eddie George at Tennessee State, and Kenny Anderson at Fisk University. Did you see this movement coming when you were at Hampton or any, um, any of the schools where you coached at? Did you see this coming? No, I did not. Um, and when I was at Hampton, we were moving from D2 to the D1. And so that was a major jump. Uh, we weren't sure if we could do it, get the players in there to get it done. But we were able to recruit some of the guys because they wanted to, they wanted the HBCU experience. So that's how we got a lot of the guys. Um, I never forget going up to get Tommy Adams from um, Northern Virginia. And everybody's like, you're wasting your time. He's the number one soccer player in the state. And we kept talking to him and then we talked to mom. And the next thing you know, the kid wanted to come. We got him on a visit, came down, phenomenal visit. We made sure of that and we got the kid, you know, and he's, he was a phenomenal player. He was on that team that beat Iowa State when they uh, upset Iowa State in the, in the dance. So, you know, just, just uh, didn't see that coming, but could see how that would transpire, you know, after you got out there and, um, you know, would you, would you, you got to have somebody with a voice. And, and that's what that's what Coach Prime has. He has the voice. He's not just talking it. He's doing it. He's living it. Uh, he's got his boy living it. So, I, I, you know, I really, you know, hats off to him, man, for, for really just stepping up. That's all we really needed was someone to step up and, and, and to shine the light on, on the HBCU um, because it is lopsided and it shouldn't be like that. Um, you know, you got the Hamptons now that's in a different league than not in the MEAC. Um, so that, that, that's, a, that's a good thing, I think, you know, for the HBCUs. Now, they, now, now they're on even ground. And I always said if, if Hampton could get on even ground, they're going to be phenomenal because what a what a great school to sell. I mean, you got so yeah. much stuff to sell. And they're, they're really prideful of their team there, mm -hmm. um, you know, Hampton pride, you know. So, um, you know, so I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I think didn't see it, but I knew it had potential to come. But, man, hats off to, the, you know, Coach Prime and everybody else, Eddie George and all them for – you know, jumping in there. And of course, my man, Chucky, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, Chucky Brown for, you know, getting it done. He's going to get it done over there. Uh, yeah. He's just going to have to get the right people around him. And, you know, they got to buy in and believe. And I think he can get it done. But, uh, you know, hats off to those guys to push it and, and get it going. And, you know, because I think I think we paved the way for a lot of those guys, you know, um, you know, because at Hampton, we had a white coach, you know, and Steve Murphy and I was a part of that staff. And then I was a part of the staff with Bobby Collins. And, you know, so, it, you know, I think we had a lot of good stuff going on there. And now it shows because now they're in a whole different league now. And, you know, I just think it's, it's much more room for for that, for those kind of teams to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to put you on the spot, Coach. I got a couple of more uh -oh. questions for you, but I got to put you on the spot. Okay. Who, who, who's the greatest who, Who's the greatest in UVA history on the court? I mean, obviously, Ralph is. <laughs> they Ralph. changed rules for him. Uh, Ralph Sampson, I'd say, is definitely up there. But I, I'd say, man, Brian Stiff, is, that's a tough dude, man. Yeah, he was, he that's a, a tough team. dude because he was a tough matchup. If you yeah. put a big boy on him, he gonna go around and dunk on him. If you put a guard on him, he gonna big boy him. Uh, he was just a tough matchup, man. And we put him in places to be successful. Mm -hmm. And he could play on the block. He could play on the wing. It did not matter for him. And he had an unbelievable uh, heart. Uh, his heart was unbelievable. I remember in the game we played in uh, in the early, uh, I think it was the first game we played at Vanderbilt. You know, those benches are at the end of the court. And yeah. <laughs> You know, I hadn't seen him for a while. I mean, you know, I, like I say, he's on the left side. I'm on the right side. So I did. I hadn't face to face seen him in, in a while in, during the game. And we went to the free throw line and I looked over at him and he had no front tooth. 
<laughs> then, like, yo, man, you know your two spot? He said, man, that happened the first play of the game. I said, what? And this is like <laughs> late, man. And I was like, man, I, I'm sorry, man. I didn't even know you was going through all that. <laughs> so that just lets you know how intense and how, you know, he, he never said anything, man. And, you know, so we, I never saw his tooth missing until we went to the free throw line. So I always tell people, man, that dude is just unbelievably tough. And he doesn't say much. He's just humble, and he he just played, man. But I think those two guys in my book were the top uh, guys up there, um, you know, because of the way they carried themselves. And obviously, it's Ralph's house, no matter how you look at it. Um, but you know, I think uh, Bryant came in and did 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 the job, and you know, came there with an unbelievable, um, you know, notoriety. And he, when he got there, he he proved them all to be right. So. I think those are the two guys I would say. Now you played against some heavy hitters in the ACC, and I forgot to mention. Um, I think you played against Sam Ivy at Wake Forest, correct? Yep, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, he, he, he was a, he was a very good player. Um, yes, he was. A lot of people don't talk about. Mm -mm. Um, but who would you say is the best player that you played against in the ACC? Lenny Lenny Bias. No doubt about it. Lenny Bias was the best. Um, Johnny Dawkins is right there with him, but you know, Lenny, like I told you, man, Lenny was special, man. And it was, it was just an unbelievable guy that, you know, just played with just raw talent and and you know, but he he had something about him, man. He was a as they call him, he was a dog, man. He was mm -hmm. a straight dog. That was before <laughs> people even used that term anymore. But Lenny Bias was special, man. And and he was a matchup problem and he was so athletic and you know, could shoot the mid range. And I mean, he was just all over the court, man. He was just a great, great player. And, you know, I, I just, I, I feel bad when I have to talk about it because of what he yeah. could have done, you know, later on in life would have been unbelievable. But, you know, it, it, that too was probably something that everybody need to learn from. Uh, I think, you know, it really helped guys to, to really see that, you know, you got to stay in the moment. You know, you can't go outside that moment because you don't know what's bad out there and how many people are not out there for you. You know, they could mm -hmm. be against you. So, you know, I, I'm just glad that, you know, that I got to play with them and that I got to see them. And, you know, my my, my boys, that my boys always ask me, you know, that question, my sons, and, you know, of course, Michael, but I didn't play against Michael, but on the court, on the ACC court, I'd have to say Lenny Bias. Okay. And besides the University Hall, which which uh, which place in the ACC was the Able most fun play? Number one. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> That place is rocking, boy. Cameron is the best, man. Cameron is the best place. Mm. You know, guys, you can talk, and it's great because when you go around guys that's played there, you say, did you ever feel the floor moving? And, you know, did you, could you believe that those people were all the way up at the top of that mug? And it was hot at the bottom, so I'm only, I'm a, I can only imagine how hot it was at the top. So, you know, when you when you say that to guys, they're like, you know, the conversations you get from other guys or things that they thought was crazy that you was like, I didn't even, you know, I didn't catch that, you know, but it was always, you know, Coach K was always a class act guy. You know, he 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 was just all, and I never beat him. I never beat him. Never beat him. No, mm -hmm. never beat him my whole four years. And, I, you know, we got, like I said, we got close in that stretch when we beat Carolina, lost to Duke real close. And when Terry Holland was out, but um, never beat them, man. And that, that you know, so I always told everybody, I, that's one of my favorite teams in the ACC because if you can't beat them, you got to join them. So for a while, I was I was a Dukey, uh, you know, rooting for them. Mm -hmm. Never when they played Virginia, though, but definitely yeah. <laughs> when they played anybody else, and especially them people in that powder blue. Right, 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 right. Yeah, when they played them. So, but yeah, so, you know, it, it, was, it was a good run, you know, good time. Um, you know, and like you said, it was phenomenal players. I could go on and on and naming the ones yeah. at all of those schools, but it was just, you know, Cameron was the, mo you, you had the most fun at Cameron, no doubt about it. Before I let you get out of here, I got two names. Um, I'm going to say these two names uh, and the first thing that comes to mind, I just want you to give me one word. The second um, name, you didn't play for, play for this guy, but you know, I'm sure you've had some um, some experiences with this guy, but the first one is uh, Terry Holland. Class act, a Virginia gentleman. Uh, he taught us how to, you know, how to be in the media. He taught us how to 
not get down on yourself. He taught us how to be patient. Uh, and like I said, he taught us how to be Virginia gentlemen. I mean, it was nothing for us to go to any event and he wouldn't be like hiding behind you going, man, I hope he says the right thing. You know, he knew he had trained us to say what we were supposed to say and he could trust us to, you know, to carry on what he has taught us. And, you know, that that's shout out to him too, by the way, because mm -hmm. he's not doing great. And, you know, that's my guy. You know, I played with him for all four years and, um, you know, it's tough to see him. He, he, he's such a big man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, you got to realize, man, you got your coaches taller than you and bigger than you, you know? So it was like always like, but he wasn't intimidating like that. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. he could just say something real, real quietly. And you'd be like, dang, man, he got on me, you know? <laughs> and uh, one night we was playing and he told me, he said, if you're not the first one back down the floor, I'm going to take you out of the game. And mm -hmm. he said that I didn't know if we made the shot, missed the shot. I just sprinted back every time. And he said, I knew you could do it. You know, so it was just ways that he could tell you stuff without really, you know, going hard at you. But he would just be like, this is what you got to do to help us win. All right. The second the second name real quick is Jim Valvano. Oh, uh, man, he almost had me, man. He almost had me. <laughs> He's a salesman. That's the word I'll use for him. Salesman. <laughs> He almost had me to be uh, in Raleigh, man. I, I tell you, man, he he came to my school. He was always there. And he some kind of way got in with my best friend, which was the quarterback. And uh, his name was Cam Young. And he was a left-handed quarterback. He played at, he went on to play at uh, NC State. And he said, man, you can come. You can live with him. He's your brother. You don't want to be somewhere without your brother, do you? And he was just <laughs> on and on and on. And man, he was so, it was so hard to tell him, you know, hey, man, I'm just going to, you know, I'm not ready to make a decision. Man, because that dude, man, I could just see, you know, he had Chucky there. He yeah. had Becton, uh, 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 Bolton. Yeah, Bolton. Yeah. Benny Bolton. Ben Bolton. He had yeah. Ben. He had, I mean, just on, uh, uh shoot kelsey was there right kelsey uh what charles yeah, so Shackleford was, was there with them right charles Char, there you go charles yeah. Shackleford was there so yeah. he had some and i was like man that was levi lester i think he Le, levi lester yeah he levi was lester. There. i mean so it was just so many guys man that he had on that i was like man this dude it is so hard to tell this dude no man but well, you know like i said my dad made a decision that Stay in the state, they'll always remember you. And he, yeah. that was a great thing. He he didn't have any, any clue of recruiting or any of that stuff. He was just saying from a standpoint of, if you stay in the state, they'll always remember you. And right. he's been so right, man. Cause I'm, I never dreamed of this place, Bluefield. Um, and it's not that far from where I live. I never, I never heard of it up until I came here. And a lot of my guys I played against in high school, they came here for college. But I had never heard of this place. And, and and the other thing is, it's in the state of Virginia. And I was like, that's amazing that he said that, you know, that if you just live in the state of Virginia, I mean, play in the state of Virginia, they'll always remember you. And he was he was 100% spot on. So, you know, um, that was great to have that kind of guidance and, and that kind of wisdom uh, to look ahead and say, hey, make sure that you uh, understand that uh, this is what you're up against later on in life. He was like, it ain't gonna matter. Right now, everybody's gonna cheer for you, but it's when that ball stops bouncing, how can you use what you've done to get to where you wanna go to? And he was he was so right on that. But that's, yeah, Valvano was a salesman, man. Salesman yeah. all the way. Rest in, yeah, rest in peace to uh, Jim Valvano as well as Kelsey yeah. Williams. Yeah. Um, Coach, I appreciate you coming on the hey, show. Man. Man. This was uh, yeah, this was fun, man. I, I I apologize for the technical difficulties early, no man. But, uh, this was uh, this was big time right here. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And anytime you need it, let me know. All right, man. I appreciate you, everybody. Richard Morgan. This is Sports Talk. Play Agent Three. Sports Talk. Agent Three.